How can we prepare ourselves spiritually to reject the mark of the beast? What do we need to focus on so that we can leave the system before the cashless society arrives? A cashless society is coming and there are many who are not prepared. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five spiritual preparations that we can be working on right now that will strengthen us and will help us during testing times. These are spiritual preparations that we need to be taking care of right now and not waiting for some time in the future. The first lesson I want to share with you is learning to listen to God. This is one of the fundamental things we need right now in our relationship with God, but especially as the end times come closer. If we're going to survive spiritually while outside of the system, we really need to learn to hear from God. Now, many people have different ways of hearing from God. In fact, we recognize that there are several ways that God can speak to us. The most important thing I want to share with you on this topic of hearing from God has to do with our sincerity. We need to be truly sincere in wanting to hear from God in the first place. Some people talk about hearing from God by way of the Bible. Now, the Bible is fantastic and it has God's will written there in black and white and anyone can hear what God wants from us, especially in the teachings of Jesus. But the reality is, if we're not sincere, if we don't deeply desire to hear God's will for our lives and we only just want to hear what is most convenient for us, then even the Bible becomes something that can cause us harm, as well as to those around us. Because instead of coming away with the truth, we end up distorting the text to support a lie. That's why sincerity is a key factor if we want to genuinely hear from God. Another way that we need to prepare spiritually is to learn true spiritual discernment. Jesus said that in the last days there will be false prophets and false teachers and that they will deceive many, including the elect, if it were possible, due to the signs and wonders that they are going to be doing. To recognize them and to not be deceived, we need spiritual discernment. And this spiritual discernment has nothing to do with religious dogmas or having the right doctrines. It's not about understanding if someone is a false teacher because they're teaching a mistaken doctrine or because they have the wrong theology. It has to do with discerning their spirit and discerning the motivations for why they do what they do. There are a lot of people who know the entire Bible and they have so-called perfect theology and they've studied in theological colleges and received doctorates and all that kind of stuff and become reverends and, and, and pastors and teachers and all the different titles that they use for themselves. But they're still far from God and they end up being false prophets and teachers because they simply speak about doctrines and dogmas and yet they never bring you to a deep relationship with God. And yet there are other people that perhaps they're mistaken in a lot of theological areas and yet they're sincere and they can turn out to be a lost sheep of God. That's why we need spiritual discernment. We have another video on our channel called Five Ways to Identify a False Prophet or Teacher. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it because it's not focused on the many different false doctrines that are out there, but it's focused on spiritual principles that can apply to anybody. Now another preparation that we need to make is conquering our fears. Both the system and the devil use fear to manipulate us and we have to overcome that fear. We have to understand that life doesn't end here when our bodies die. I mean one of the greatest fears that we can have is the fear of dying. It's the fear of losing our life or the life of a loved one. And that is the very fear that we need to overcome. In the book of Revelation, it says that people overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by his testimony, and by not loving their lives unto death. They were willing to give their lives for the gospel. Jesus himself said, don't fear those who kill the body and afterwards can do no more. If you're going to fear, fear God who can not only destroy your body but also your soul. We really need to overcome fear if we're going to survive spiritually in the last days and be able to resist a system that is coming without resorting to violence. Another point that is really important is that we need to live the gospel. Many people don't even know what the gospel is. They speak about the gospel and yet a lot of the time when they talk about the supposed gospel that they're preaching, they're really only preaching a system of beliefs, a particular doctrine, a theological point or, or a particular system of theology that one has to accept intellectually. But the true gospel is Jesus' message. The gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the gospel according to the apostles is Jesus and his teachings, his life and his message. And we need to live that gospel. 
It's not enough to know the words that Jesus spoke. Jesus himself said that whoever hears his words and doesn't put them into practice is building on sand. If we want to survive the storms that are coming to earth in the near future, we have to have our faith built squarely on the rock. And that is done through living Jesus' message. Another very important spiritual preparation that we need is to learn to live by faith. Living by faith simply means living each day in obedience to God. It's something dynamic. It's, it isn't a doctrine. It's not a dogma where you can simply say, I live by faith because I say I live by faith. It's not a catchphrase. It's a way of life. It's something that you really need to put into practice. It's something you have to live. More specifically, when we speak of living by faith, we're talking about understanding that if we're doing God's will, then God Himself will take care of our needs. We're talking about the teachings of Jesus where He says not to worry about what we're going to eat or drink or wear, that the unbelievers are the ones who worry about those things, but that we shouldn't worry because we know we have a Father in Heaven who already knows what our needs are even before we ask Him. So all we need to do is put God's kingdom and His righteousness as our first priority and everything that we need will be given to us. This is so important in light of the mark of the beast because we're not going to be able to buy or sell without that mark and it is that dependency on money that people have that will lead them to accept the mark of the beast. Only people that learn to live by faith and that trust that God can provide for their needs outside of man's economic system are going to be able to survive this test. Now there are some very important practical preparations that we need to be doing urgently before the mark comes in. These aren't the same kind of preparations that most preppers are focusing on like storing up food and building shelter. Those preparations are fine if God is leading people to do those things. But the preparations I'm talking about are things that you need to start practicing right now that will help you survive spiritually even if you have no food and shelter ready or if it's compromised somehow. I'm going to be sharing those practical tips in another video so make sure you subscribe to the channel and set it to receive notifications because we're going to keep trying to publish helpful information while we have the freedom to do so and while God continues to lead us in this direction. Please take these issues seriously. Remember, time is short. Let's make the most of it.